Well, the ultimate of objective uh, of the GHS is to get uh, the global classification on a uniform level all over the places. And why are we doing that? To ensure proper risk management measures for worker protection, for the consumer, and for the environment, as well as for transport and dangerous goods, and for uh, safety of installation. Because the CLP for substances is one thing, but the CLP for mixtures is just starting and going ahead within Europe. And there, I mean, if you compare, you have about 100,000 substances, but uh, 2 million and more mixtures on the European market, you see how much more work, especially for the formulators, who are depending on the right classification, on the gather gathering of reach, uh, how much more work that is, and in practice it's probably more costly on an individual level, especially for formulators, than the reach obligations. Currently we are somewhere here, before the end of the deadline, uh, when the change from the old system in the EU, the Dangerous Substance and Dangerous Preparations Directive, to uh, the fully application of the CLP regulation will start. And this has all kinds of uh, applications for labeling requirements, for the safety data sheets, and so on and so forth. The harmonized classification that should primarily apply for CMR substances. It should apply for respiratory sensitizers, for all active ingredients for plant protection products and biocidal products, and for other endpoints on a case-by-case -case basis. But please bear in mind, Annex 6 does not fully harmonize the classification of a single substance. It just harmonizes those endpoints mentioned there. All the other hazard categories, some of the downstream legislation, refer to Annex 6 of the CLP classification, cosmetics uh, regulation, for example. And there, you have direct risk management measures once a substance is classified as CMR and included in Annex 6 of the uh, uh, CLP regulation. So this means it always gives some problems uh, in Annex 6 uh, of uh, the CLP regulation and, and discussions that even if a, a classification is harmonized, it's not right, it's not properly justified. Nevertheless, if it's included in Annex 6, you have to use this type of classification. We have to notify everything into the inventory. Uh, well, uh, and then this is published. I took uh, diethylamine as an example which is harmonized classified, which has some other classifications, and you find a lot of different classifications in the classification and labeling inventory. And, and I'm not saying that they vary substantially, but it's not easy for anyone to find out what would be the most likely and most solid classification by just looking into the classification and labeling inventory. They don't differ markedly, but still this little different can have an effect in different risk management measures of that substance on local level. Well, and these different classifications of official, of one substance in different official lists in certain countries, of course, triggered discussion at UN level on is it possible to establish a global list of classified chemicals. This work is ongoing. It will not lead to results in the very near future, but in my opinion, 2020, you will have 
an estimation on how a list, a global list on classified chemicals could look like. If I'm talking about legislation framework, I'm talking about product legislations, like biocidal products, detergents, toys, and so on. I'm talking about waste, water, workers' protection, uh, chemical accidents, transport of dangerous goods, and so on. And there are still some others which directly or indirectly refer to CLP and have consequences on the classification. Well, I said before that the transposition from the old regime to the CLP requirements does not always match. So especially in the transition phase, with the direct downstream consequences, one has to be very careful with all those types of legislations, yeah? because you never know whether the reclassification from the old system to the uh, CLP in Europe will not have severe consequences on the way on handling the product. These new directive, which are aligned already with the criteria of the CLP uh, regulation, needs to be transposed by the member states until uh, middle of next year. It's mainly a one-to-one -one adaptation to the CLP criteria, but there are still some uh, issues like the signs. There are no real signs for the chronic hazards. So they might be used for work protection. Uh, labeling of container for storage in connecting pipes should be, shall bear CLP pictograms. Um, and for young workers, all CLP hazards were transposed, including even corrosion to metal. Thanks. I was a little bit too long, but uh, I come now to the final conclusions on the downstream effects of the CLP uh, classification. CLP has significant effect on downstream legislation, especially in the combination with the systematic compilation of information, of partially new information under REACH. EU legislation very often is purely hazard-based in that sense that once you have to classify a, cla a substance or a mixture, it immediately triggers risk management method. Within the CLP transition period, downstream legislation, and we see that, and this is still ongoing, is adapted in Europe to the new criteria. There are consequences. There will come up new consequences. They are foreseen, but they cannot be avoided. However, if companies prepare timely enough for these consequences, yeah? And one final remark. Unfortunately, we do have not only EU legislation you have to take care of, you have to take care of local legislation as well, don't forget about those in the individual member states. And with that, thanks for your patience.